Welcome to The Real Story. I'm Lori Perez. For the second time, Governor Dana Malloy is on tour, pushing an aggressive plan that has crowds of supporters and critics. This time, it is his sweeping plan to overhaul Connecticut schools. Here now to talk about some of the finer points, Ray Ann Knopp, the Executive Director of the Connecticut Council for Education Reform, Joe Sirasolo, the Executive Director of the Connecticut Association of Public School Superintendents, and Leo Canty, who is Vice President of ATF Connecticut. Thank you all for being here. I guess if we could start with um, whether you all agree that it is maybe more heated heated than you than than maybe you expected. I went. I know I went to the East, uh, school hearing in West Hartford, and I thought it was almost um, a little angry. I thought it was almost a little angry. I'm not surprised that it's heated. I mean, these are some tough issues that need to be dealt with. Uh, people are looking at the issues in terms of how it affects them. Mm -hmm. um, some of the uh, behavior, I think, has been a little over the top, but that's been a minority of people. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's, these are tough issues, and when you deal with tough issues, people are going to get uh, excited about them. Leo, uh, you know what's really good about this is the fact that we've never spent this amount of time talking about this serious mm -hmm. an issue. Mm -hmm. And all the previous administrations, I think, have failed to come forward with anything that represents a plan or anything that represents a solution to a serious issue. So we've been hamstrung in our ability. So there's a lot of vent up uh, anger, frustration, and things that need to come out. So I think it's a very healthy thing that people are becoming engaged, involved, and having these good discussions about this stuff. And we're going to have differences. Mm -hmm. And it's our job is to try to work through those differences and come up with something that will work for the kids in our state. And I think it is re really revealing the differences um, in terms of where people think we should start. Um, and I'm wondering where you think we should start. Well, I, I agree that uh, the dialogue is very important and healthy and the dialogue needs to be really public. And uh, I think also anytime we're talking about something so personal, I mean, we're yeah. talking about the lives of children, we're talking about teachers who do such a difficult job. And uh, those things are very personal, mm -hmm. and it affects families and everyone in Connecticut. So I, I think starting by really thinking about what's right for our children and how we can best support teachers in meeting those needs is, is a really important place to start. And I know that you all have expressed some frustration that so much of the talk or the headlines um, seem to be centered around uh, certification and tenure. Mm -hmm. and, and talk about why that's frustrating. Well, the governor's put forward a fairly comprehensive proposal that deals with a lot of things, early childhood, uh, low-performing schools, low-performing districts, um, preparation of teachers, support for teachers. Uh, you know, I, I'm not surprised that the dialogue publicly has gotten around to one or two issues, but I think we need to expand it out. The, Leo uh, made a good point. We're having a chance now to really talk about what ought to happen with education in this state, and we shouldn't single it in on one issue. We should look at the package comprehensively, and we're the adults in the room. If we can't figure out how to straighten this thing out, is the kids are going to suffer, and they ought to get rid of us and bring some other adults in to get it straightened out. Well, see right here, we all agree on a whole bunch of things, and I'll tell you, everybody that's in this has way more agreement than disagreement, and I think there is a way to set a proper tone and tenor. Anyone who wants to get into a good outcome, you know, the kids, the parents, the teachers, the administrators, the politicians, and everybody else, first thing you need to go into the environment is with a, a commitment of respect and cooperation. Right. Some of us think that didn't quite happen on the opening note, and so there's some effect from that that's playing out. But, we're going to get past that. I will bet that we'll have something that we all can agree with at the end of the day, and that's what we're looking to try to do. Since we do have a little time, though, let's talk about some of the, some of the finer points. And, and let's start off with um, one point that I heard brought up at the education hearings I've been to is um, teachers' concerns about how much test scores should be part of the equation when it comes to evaluating. I mean, how much how much should it be? Well, I was part of the group that, uh, along with the teacher unions, that put together the guidelines that have been approved by the state uh, board of education. We we're very sensitive to that. Uh, student growth in achievement is 45 percent of the new evaluation uh, model. Only half of that uh, can be used, uh, for only half of that can you use state, state test scores it, for those teachers who teach a subject that's actually tested by the state tests. Over 70 percent of the teachers will not have the state test play any role in their evaluation. For the others, it's, it's no more than half. So the rest of the growth, or whatever uh, constitutes growth, is what? multiple measures of student growth. There can be local assessments, there can be uh, in the areas, uh, for example, an art teacher, you can look at a portfolio of their work. 
with English teachers. I used to be an English teacher. You can look at a portfolio of a student's writing. Actually, we envision that as something that will be determined by the teacher and their evaluator wow. at the beginning of the year. They'll take a look at their students. They'll say, what's a reasonable amount of growth? How are we going to uh, measure that? And that's what people will be held accountable for as we go through the year. It will be the job of the school to provide enough support and help for those teachers so they can reach their objectives. Um, and then at the end of the year, you do an assessment. So I think if we get by some of the rhetoric and some of the concerns <clears throat> and get down to what's really going to happen between teachers and evaluators, a lot of the stuff you're seeing going on now will be resolved. So that sounds all right, right, Leo? It is. It, here's the problem, which is I think this is a perfect example. We got you know a few minutes to talk here, and what we're doing is going into very, very detailed pieces about how we're going to structure an evaluation system. Meantime, my daughter's a fifth grade teacher in a Hartford school. She is on this group called DonorsChoose.org uh, asking people to please send her money so she can buy paper and pens and crayons and glue sticks and a rug for the floor for her class. While we're here arguing over some of these things which make less sense than trying to find a way to get the stuff that teachers need in the classroom. And when they don't have the tools, we're going to evaluate them on their performance for doing the job without the tools. Well, couldn't I mean, so, so be let's part find, of the conversation? Yes. Okay. But that's, I mean, that's the thing that we need to be focusing on is more like how do we deal with the end result and get somewhere rather than starting uh, some of these more complicated issues and trying to uh, feed them down. And so I, I see that we're, we're not spending the kind of time we need to spend saying how do we fix that front line, those front line workers who dedicate their lives and do great things for kids and help them as much as we can. Yeah. That's part of the bill, yeah. but how much talk are we talking about that? Well, Unfortunately, very, not as very much. Very little, actually. Exactly. And, and we I need think to change this dialogue. Exactly. And I think the concerns are about standardized testing are, are valid concerns. I mean, they are one measure uh, at one point in time, and they should be factored in. But as you say, teachers face a lot of other challenges and a lot of other right. issues. And well, so, let's work to help them. Right. So the sooner we can get to discussing, instead of what we don't like, the sooner we can get to discussing what could work, I think the better off we're going to be. I'm ready. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll come back. It's going by so quickly. We'll take a quick break, come back, and continue our conversation about education reform in Connecticut.